In this video, I'm gonna show you how to create a simple toggle or switch component inside of Figma. I'll walk through a couple different styles and then a few different features you can build in to make this a really modular component. I'd also recommend checking out the Design System Surf website if you haven't. It's not a sponsor, but they have these free blueprints available that break down the anatomy and different best practices. So I'll throw a link down below as well. So taking a look at our working file, basically the way I've set this up is we have our toggle switch component, we have an item where we can set a label, and then we just have a simple list which groups those together. Inside the toggle switch, um, I have those three different styles. Of course, you can add as many as you want, um, but inside we have a couple things going on. So at the top, we've got those styles we can control. We have the state, which I've just mapped to another toggle. And then I also have an indicator. So you have some other uh, visual differentiator for accessibility, so you're not relying on color alone. And then I also threw in a label outside if you want a really compact way to describe what that setting is. Obviously, you wouldn't necessarily pair that with a full toggle item like this, um, but just in case you wanna know how, we'll put that in there as well. So jumping into the component, let's just grab a simple rectangle and I'm gonna make this 48 wide by about 24 tall. We can duplicate that and just change the color to something different. And I'm gonna scale this down to 20 by 20. And a general rule of thumb is that you'd want the top and bottom radius to match the left uh, radius. In this case, it's on the left when it's off and then we'll put it to the right when it's on. So I just wanna make sure that's consistent. If you're just going with a simple box design, you could leave this. Um, we're gonna start with our box design and then we'll add the rounded and then that skinny. So for the outer radius, we're gonna set this to uh, six pixels. And a good practice is that your outer radius minus the distance equals your inner radius. So because we have this two away and we have six pixels on the outside, we would set this to four. That just gives a really nice polished look for your corners. Next, we'll add our indicator. This is gonna be a simple rectangle, about two by six pixels wide. I'm just gonna rotate that and center it. And I'm gonna put this at 999, just max out the radius. And then we will duplicate that and group those into something called indicator. You'll see why we have a copy in a second, but then the last thing to do is just add that label. I'm gonna call it label for now, keep it simple. And then we'll group the entire switch with the indicator as one group, and then we'll put that all together in an auto layout so that we can group the label as well as the switch. And from here, we can build our component. So just uh, command alt K, or you can right click and say create component. And I like to do this because it gives us all the elements at the component level. So once we start duplicating all the variations, we can really simply just switch the styles rather than creating everything from scratch. So we'll call this switch, toggle, whatever you want. And we'll come up to the properties and select add variant. Now for this property one, we're gonna set this to state. And then we can just click this plus button to add a new variant. And I'm gonna space these out a little bit so we can see what we're doing. And on the first version, we're gonna change that state from toggle to false, and then the second one to true. So we're basically just creating a Boolean property. Now we can set up our styles. So we're going to make sure that this disabled state looks disabled, and we'll change this just to something like a black color. And then for that active state, we'll move the entire indicator over to the right, and again, leaving about two pixels of space on the right. And then if we click into that little rectangle we made, we're gonna rotate one of them 90 degrees so we get that plus icon. The reason we do this across both of them is so that when we prototype this, we can use Smart Animate, and it'll give a really nice fluid motion of it animating from a minus to a plus really easily without any work on our part. Now let's click into that indicator and make sure we have select multiple and we'll come over to appearance and select add, and we'll just say, say uh, indicator. That way we can toggle that on and off. And then we'll do the same thing with the label, appearance, add, and just say label. 
We'll also add a text property for the label so we can override that. I'll just call this label text. And if we copy out one of our components here, you can see we've got our state, which toggles it on and on. We can turn off our indicator, we can turn off our label, and we can also override that text. Now for the label, I'm noticing that the component isn't resizing. So a quick way to fix that is just jumping back into our components and making sure for auto layout, it's set to hug contents instead of fill. And now you'll see when we turn that on and off on the right, it's resizing nicely. Last thing to do here is just to prototype. So we'll select that first and drag it down to the next one. You can leave it to on click and we'll leave it to smart animate. And then we'll just have another one going the other way. I have it set to 150 because this is a really nice snappy uh, speed. But obviously, if you want this to be really subtle or smooth, you can play around with the duration there. Usually in that 150 to like 400 range is going to be nice. Anything longer for something that users are trying to interact with and touch is going to feel too slow. So keeping it in somewhere in that range will still be smooth, but you know, pretty snappy as well. If we open this up in prototype mode, you should see this animating pretty nicely. Because we left that to smart animate, that little minus to plus animation is working really fluidly and the colors are snapping, transition looks good. Now the benefit of having it all set up, all we're really gonna do from here is tweak the styles. So we can expand out our component a little bit just to give us some room. And then I'm gonna copy all of these out two or three times just to create those other styles resize our component and then in the properties at the top right we're going to add a new variant and just call this style for this first one we're going to call it default or you could call it square this middle one's going to be rounded and the last one's going to be skinny then i'll just style these in the middle by changing that corner radius so for both of these i'm pretty much just going to max out the radius to something like 999 and then for the skinny we just want that background to be shorter than the actual switch itself so something like 15 or 16 pixels tall and then we can make it like 40 pixels wide and that just gives it a nice kind of hovering state and then for the track slider one i'm going to make this uh, height of the background a little shorter than the actual indicator so like 16 pixels tall and we'll go with 40 pixels wide, and I might just round that out to be more circular. Same with the indicator. I'll probably max that out. It just looks a little cleaner. And then I want to make sure that all of our states are working correctly. So basically just select all of the bottom variants and make sure state is set to true, and all the top variants are set to false. If you want to have it actually be a drop down, instead of saying false and true, you could just type in what you want the active state to be. So you could say unselected, selected. If you're going to be adding other states like focused, pressed, and hover, then you would want that to be a drop down. But since we're going for a really simple setup, you can use a Boolean property to just be on and off. And let's jump into the demo just to make sure everything's working. So we've got our state on and off. We can change those styles. We can turn off the indicator and we've got our label with the text override property. That's looking good. Now we can go ahead and set up the list container and this goes even faster. You can just drag out a version and we're gonna turn off the label in this case and we're gonna move the label to be on the left. And then you can just group that in an auto layout and turn that into a component. We'll call this toggle item. For this one, I like to start with about 200 pixels wide. We're going to use a fixed width because when we create the group, we'll set that to fill. And make sure that your label is set to fill as well. And we're going to set that to truncate. So you can come over to typography on the right and then come down to truncate text and just make sure that's on as well. I'm going to add eight pixels of padding between that. And just to quickly test, you should see as you scale down the item that the closer you get with that eight pixels padding, the label just start to truncate. This is also a great place to add your minimum and maximum widths. 
So if you don't want it to be less than 100 pixels, you could, with that item selected, come over to the width, just drop that down and select add minimum width and set that to 100. You could add a maximum if you want to, but now users can't drag that any smaller so that your label is never gonna get too truncated or collapsed. We can drag a copy of that toggle item to create the toggle list. So we'll basically just wrap that in another component and call this toggle group or toggle list, whatever you want, and then turn that group into a component. You can hit enter and then command D just to duplicate that out. We'll hit command A to select all of those, then command R, and we can select current name and then number. And this is basically just gonna rename all of those with toggle item and then a unique number. And I'll just tweak the padding a little bit for the group to something like eight pixels and we'll select four pixels of padding between toggles. And that's basically the list and the group set up really quickly. Another thing you could do is just surface some of those nested properties. So if you click on toggle item under add property, you could collect, uh, click nested instances and just turn on switch. And then same thing for the toggle list, just select add property, nested instances, and you could turn on all of those items so that if you wanted to be able to control it at the top level, you can without having to click in. So if we drag out a toggle list here, you'll see all five of those options. We can turn indicators off, all of that in one place. Pretty much all the work we have to do for our toggles. If you wanna learn how to set something up like this, where users are actually clicking on a switch and it's affecting the design, like switching from light to dark mode, the key is to design all of your elements with variables and then make sure that you have a light and a dark mode set up. So I have an accent color, I have some background, container colors, all of that's all configured in this simple little library file. This is all gonna be included in the template. So if you need to reference it just to figure it out, you can definitely copy any of these values. I did not spend too much time or really check contrast too much, but essentially what you would do is have one color uh, shade for the background, the container, the toggles, all of that, and then another shade for dark. And once you have that all set up correctly, on your frame, you'll see that new dropdown to set that mode. So we can toggle that there. And all I really have set up is a simple prototype so that when the user clicks on this switch, it's gonna go to the dark mode. It's gonna set that state to on. And when they turn, click on it again, it's going to reset that back to the uh, first frame. So that's everything you need to know in creating a toggle component in Figma. I'll link the working file down below so you can duplicate this out and feel free to use it. If it was helpful, be sure to like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks.